الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحابه ومن تبيهم إحسان إلى يوم الدين. Today, inshallah, we're just going to do a refresher on most of the the issues we have discussed under the topic of Tawheed, under the topic of Iman, our belief, our conviction, and conviction in belief, conviction in terms of our commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that to the Qur'an and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So today we're just going to just summarize some of those essentials that we talked about over the series of lectures that dealt with shirk and tawheed. And I just want to recap a few things just for us to understand uh, the importance of um, the topic of Tawheed and that of uh, Shirk. Tawheed is based on the kalima La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Kalima to Tawheed. It is the expression of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we all know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran in relation to this kalima, kalima to Tawheed. It says, Inna sanulqi alayka qawlin thaqeelan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to this expression, La ilaha illallah qawlin thaqeelan. That has got great impact. It's a weighty word or a weighty phrase. Extremely heavy. In terms of the impact, it's extremely heavy on the heart and the intellect, on the individual and is extremely captivating and convincing. And that's La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. But let's look at just the first aspect. La ilaha illallah. This statement in itself contains or entails both the negation of any other authority or force or God, and at the same time, it affirms the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha, no God. It's negation. Negating any power or any force or any authority that one may think needs to receive the worship of human beings. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says la ilaha illallah, the first aspect is an aspect of negation. And the second aspect is an aspect of affirmation. These two aspects formulate Kalimat al-Tawheed. Kalimat al-Tawheed is the expression of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that puts us in the category of being part of the creation. We are Allah's creation. Kalimat al-Tawheed is the foundation of the deen. If we do not have that, we do not have a deen. If we do not have that, we could not understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't understand where we're coming from or where we came from. We cannot understand our origin. It all relates back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That indeed, we cast upon you a heavy word. Means the word is extremely heavy weighty and got great impact on any individual that you may think of. Even the ones that do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the impact is still very severe and convincing. That's the impact of la ilaha illallah. The impact of that we can also see in the history and in the story and in the event of Yunus alayhi salam, that when he called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he was in the belly of the whale, فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلَمَاتِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتِ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ That the dua that he made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he called out in darknesses, فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلَمَاتِ In darknesses, in the darkness of the belly of the whale, in the darknesses of the sea, in the darknesses of the night, he called out in darknesses, and la ilaha illa ant, that there is no power, there is no might, there is no God, there is no deity except you illa ant. 
Subhanaka inni kuntu min al-thurimin. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted his dua. Because mentioning the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mentioning the uniqueness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, cause him or causes dua to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the greatness of la ilaha illallah. This is the greatness of the impact of la ilaha illallah. Musa alayhi salam has asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him a special phrase that he can repeat the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was informed to say la ilaha illallah. And then he said, but everybody says that. And then he was informed that if you were to place la ilaha illallah on one side of the scale and everything else of his creation on the other side of the scale, you will find that la ilaha illallah outweighs everything. And that's because of the impact. That because of the implication it has got. That because of how convincing it could be. That because it can captivate any mind if it's properly explained to individual. It is la ilaha illallah. We can also see in the story, the story of Fir'aun, in the event of Fir'aun, when he refused to, to acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he refused to acknowledge the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was drowned in the sea. This is an amazing ayah in the Qur'an. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us about the events of Fir'aun and his army and his soldiers. وَجَاوَزْنَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْبَحْرَ فَأَتْبَعَهُمْ فِرْعَوْنُ وَجْنُودُهُ بَغْيًا وَعَدْوًا حَتَّى إِذَا أَدْرَكَهُ الْغَرَقُ قَالَ آمَنْتُ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَّهَ إِلَّا الَّذِي آمَنَتْ بِهِ بَنُوا إِسْرَائِيلَ وَأَنَا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ It's an amazing ayah in the Qur'an. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about We took the children of Israel across the sea. Pharaoh and his host followed them in insolence and spite. At length, when overwhelmed with the flood, he said, I believe that there is no God except him, whom the children of Israel believe in. I am of those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Islam. Amentu annahu la ilaha illa allavi. In fact, what Pharaoh was saying, that he believed that there was no God except him whom the children of Israel believe in. Not committing himself to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, but indirectly he did. And that is in the true one God. In the truthfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was his death bed repentance. And even so, it was forced by the terror of catastrophe. So it was not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only the body was saved from the sea. And presumably, according to Egyptian custom, it was embalmed and the mummy was given due rights of the dead. It was a repentance that was not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the circumstances surrounding it. It was a deathbed repentance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rejected that repentance. But scholars have said that if he had said this sincerely and he meant exactly what he had said, then he would have pronounced la ilaha illallah and he could have been saved from the flood. He could have been saved from being drowned by the sea. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from his punishment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not categorize us among those people who reject the signs and reject the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not acknowledging the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but saying what the people were saying. And what he said when drowning overtook him, he said, I believe that there is no deity except that in whom the children of Israel believe. And I am of the Muslims. So it was kind of a peripheral expression 
not deep down in his heart to say that he accepted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if he had said that with great sincerity and with great meaning, accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some scholars say that he could have been saved, but he still didn't accept the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the impact of la ilaha illallah. That's the impact of Tawheed. That's the impact of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The impact continues that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يثبت, يثبت That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps firm those who believe with the firm word. يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بالقول الثابت with the firm word referring to لا إله إلا الله في الحياة الدنيا in this life وفي الآخرة and also in hereafter ويضل الله الظالمين that Allah سبحانه وتعالى sends us straight to wrongdoers and Allah does not does what he wills ويفعل الله ما يشاء Allah does anything that he wants but the fact is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that if you're committed to Tawheed, if you're committed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're committed to La ilaha illallah, يثبت الله الذين آمنوا. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps you firm, keeps you steady, keeps you intact, keeps you with those who believe. يثبت الله الذين آمنوا. In this world and also in hereafter, He actually strengthens you. What's the belief of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, in barzakh, in the akhirah. So not only in this world, at the point of death when we are dying and we're in desperation, we want to say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. That's the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us firm. Yathabbit Allah ladheena amalu bil qawl thabit. That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps firm those who believe. Those who believe, he keeps them firm with the kalima, kalima to tawheed, fi hadi al in this world, at the point of death, and in barzakh, and also in the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those people who could be firm with kalima to tawheed, fi hadi al dunya, fi al barzakh, wa fi la akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those people. That's the connection we need to have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the connection we need to have with the Quran. That's the connection we need to have with Tawheed. That's the connection we need to, to have with the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll find that when we talk about Tawheed, we can talk about Tawheed from four fundamental aspects. One of them is the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the foundation of everything. Without the recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no foundation in Islam. Without the recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no foundation uh, in respect to the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The so, kalimatu tawheed, the very first aspect of it, at kalimatu fi wujudihi, that it's recognizing the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of these aspects that we have explained over the last few weeks, Tawheed al-Rubabiyya, Tawheed al-Ulahiyya, Tawheed al-Ibadah, Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifati. These were all the various aspects of Tawheed that we have explained so that you can understand the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which creates the foundation of our Iman, which creates the foundation of our belief, which creates the foundation of our conviction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and creates that level of commitment that we need. Tawheed al-Rububiyyah. Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifati. These are the various forms. And they all intertwine. They're all together. They're all interactive. It is not that they are separate, but these are all the aspects of the same from the fundamental aspects of Islam, the fundamental aspects of Tawheed, the fundamental aspects of our Iman. They are all together. So they're not, you know, standing by themselves individually. They are all together. And it all refers back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also talk about that very fundamental aspect about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do feel that this is a missing ingredient in our life today. 
because sometimes we focus on Tawheed Rububiyya, or Tawheed Uluhiyya, or Tawheed Ibadah, or Tawheed Asma'i wa Sifati, and we forget about Wujuhuhu. We forget about the existence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and what requires of us to understand the existence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And we can look at various aspects. We talked about some of these before. The Leel al Fitrah is a natural or natural instinct. They are the evidence is by instinct that naturally people do believe that there is one God. And naturally people do believe that God is above us. And naturally people do believe that there is a super intelligent force that is controlling the entire universe. And at times we are in need of that force to help us. And that refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Tawheed aspect is about the oneness of that because you can't have many gods. You can't have three, four gods. Naturally, people would say there is only one God. It's a natural thing. Perhaps their explanation is different. And that's what is referred to the Leel al Fitrah. It's evidence by instinct. So, in a similar manner, when we think about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is absolutely one and is only one. And it's important for us to understand that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran in a very logical sense. Says, That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take unto himself a son. And there has never been with him any other God. Then, had that been the case, you will find that each God would have taken what it is created. And some of them would have sought to overcome others. Exalted is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah amma yasifun. Exalted is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above all that they describe concerning him. Why? Because he's only one. Because if there has been more than one God, then you will find there would be rivalry in power. They will be fighting for power. It's just like if you have two presidents of a country, or two prime ministers of a country, or two chairmen in the meeting. All of these would be vying for power, one against the next. But because there is one, there is no vying for power. There is no rivalry in power. And that in itself indicates a system that is unique. It indicates something that is designed from a super intellectual being, and that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding so we can understand the oneness of Tawheed and understand the implication of that. We can also look at another example, a logical example, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, from a natural perspective, he is one. The natural Inclination to human being is talking about how things come into existence. An Arabic saying we can say, "Huwa mawjud li kulli mawjud." La yumkin an yujad hatha al wujud bi ghair al wajid. That he brought everything into existence. Everything came into existence by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It's not possible that those in existence can exist without someone that exist brought them into existence meaning that we couldn't just be here by chance for us to be in existence then there has to be a super intelligent power that brought us into existence and that's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are under him and that's why we need to acknowledge that he is the creator and he is above everything else and that's part of tawheed and that's why i kept on repeating Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, wa Tawheed al-Ibadah, Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifati, wa Tawheed al-Rubabiyya. These are all various aspects, they're all intertwined together, and we need to understand them in that perspective. It is about understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's about understanding the very fundamental aspects of our Iman. And this is what we've been talking about all the time. Rububiyya, Tawheed al-Rububiyya is the key to Uluhiyya. They are not inseparable. They are all together. You cannot have Uluhiyya and Rububiyya separately, but they are all together. 
all four are interconnected. Existence of Allah, Tawheed al-Rububiyya, Tawheed al-Uluhiyya wa ibadah, al Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifati. You might want to ask why I didn't explain all of this, but if you have explained all of this before, when we talk about existence of Allah, that has been explained. When we talk about Tawheed al-Rububiyya, that's the mastery of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or someone may say the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we went into details to talk about Lord and the Rabb, and what it entails and what it implies. We also talk about Tawheed al-Uluhiyya. Tawheed al-Uluhiyya or Ibadah refers to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is the only one worthy to be worshipped. And Tawheed al-Asma'i or Sifati refers to the names or the oneness of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which again we talked about in great details in some of the sessions that we have before.